Welcome to LDS Yoga. Thank you so much again for joining me for this part two practice of Be Ye Therefore Perfect, um, based around the talk given by Jeffrey R. Holland. This week we are going to be looking at the topic of receiving grace. Receiving grace is probably, or receiving period, is probably one of the most difficult things to do for a lot of people. What I'm talking about here is, being able to actually receive a gift from somebody. How are you good at that? I know I'm not. <laughs> I've had to learn through a lot of years of marriage how to receive a gift, uh, especially a, a heartfelt gift, um, and realizing that it's not really about what I want. It's about what the person is giving to me, or not what not. It's also not about what I think I deserve. It's about what the person wants to give. And in this case, and what we're going to be looking at today is what the Savior has given to us. And can we receive it? Can we receive his grace? Can we receive his grace, even though we're not perfect yet? And what I love about his talk is that what he describes perfection as is God himself and Jesus Christ. What he says is, so I believe that Jesus did not intend his sermon on this subject to be a verbal hammer for battering us about our shortcomings. No, I believe he intended it to be a tribute to who and what God the Eternal Father is and what we can achieve with him in eternity. In any case, I am grateful to know that in spite of my imperfections, at least God is perfect. That at least he is, for example, able to love his enemies because all too often due to the natural man and woman in us, you and I are sometimes the enemy. How grateful I am that at least God can bless those who despitefully use him because without wanting or intending to do so, we all despitefully use him sometimes. I am grateful that God is merciful and a peacemaker because I need mercy and the world needs peace. So with that, let's begin our practice. Today we will be doing a practice all about receiving. We'll begin with receiving breath and then we'll begin with receiving grace in our poses. What does that mean? Let's find out. Grab a mat, jump into something comfy, maybe grab a block, a few blocks or some books to prop yourself up on and a strap or a towel uh, for tight hamstrings. I'll see you on the mat. Let's begin by taking a comfortable seat. So you can grab a block, a couple blocks if you need to, if you have very tight hips, or maybe just a simple rolled folded blanket to place under your hips, just to give yourself a more comfortable seat. You can even sit in a chair if you want. But let's begin by just allowing and finding this idea of receiving breath. Go ahead and close your eyes down or gaze softly in front of you. Roll your shoulders up to your ears and down your back to give yourself a nice tall seat. Lift the crown of the head up towards the ceiling. Feel your body tall. Release the hips into the surface you're sitting on. And just taking a few deep breaths, just noticing where the breath is at this moment. You can even turn the palms open in this position of receiving, receiving this grace that we were talking about. Feel the coolness of the air as you breathe in through the nose. Feel its warmth as you exhale out. Make any adjustments to make yourself five or 10% more comfortable as you sit and breathe. And notice if there's any sense of dragging the breath in or trying to make the breath something that maybe it doesn't want to be. And can you shift it now? See if you can find this act of receiving breath. Maybe feeling as though you were a dry sponge dipped into water. And as you are dipped in, it just feels the pores and the spaces of dryness. The sponge just receiving the water, the body just receiving the breath. Not trying to manipulate it or change it, but just allowing and receiving. And in this place of allowing and receiving, I'll share a scripture. Yea, come unto Christ, and be perfected in him, Moroni pleads. 
Love God with all your might, mind, and strength. Then, by his grace, ye may be perfect in Christ. Our only hope for true perfection is in receiving it as a gift from heaven. We can't earn it, says Elder Holland. Thus, the grace of Christ offers us not only salvation from sorrow and sin and death, but also salvation from our own persistent self-criticism. Continue to receive the breath and just become that observer, that noticing during your practice any times that you are grasping for or manipulating breath rather than just receiving it. And this is your practice today, receiving breath, even in the midst of challenging poses, of challenging times off the mat, receiving grace, even though you are not perfect in all things yet, receiving grace and letting go of that self-criticism and judgment that may arise during your practice today in poses that may be difficult for you, in places where you might want to quit, receiving grace, receiving breath, setting this intention of receiving, bring your hands to heart center, thumbs touching your heart, Inhale, reach your arms to the sky. Exhale, drop the hands down to the side, bringing the hands back to heart center. Again, receiving the breath, inhale. Try not to grasp or manipulate as you reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, bring the hands back to heart center. Inhale, reach those hands up over the head. And exhale. Let's keep the hands up to the side this time, reaching those fingers from wall to wall. Inhale, lift and open the chest, receiving with a glad heart the breath. And exhale, curl in, tucking the chin, tucking those hands around the shoulder blades, opening the back, curling that spine. Inhale, lift and open, receive. Grace. And then exhale compassion. Inhale. One more time. And exhale. We're we'll draw those hands in front of you. Let's clasp the fingers this time and turn the palms forward as you tuck the chin and tuck the tailbone under, finding a nice curve in the spine. Inhale. Let that breath come in. Don't manipulate it. And then we'll exhale, draw that right hand to the earth, reach that left arm up and over the ear, taking a nice side bend here. Turn the chin up and down, just kind of sensing into the tight neck, receiving the stretch, this opening for the side body. Ground down through the left hip as you reach through that left fingertips to the corner of your room. Inhale, come up to center. Let's switch that side stretch, taking that left hand to the mat, reach that right arm up and over the ear, taking a nice settling feeling in the right hip to lengthen out the whole side body. You can go down on your elbow here if that feels better for you, or you can even place a block under your hand. Inhale, come on up. Then let's exhale, walk the hands forward gently, finding a nice opening for that hip. Taking a nice deep breath into the back of the body, receiving the breath even into the very low back. Practicing non-grasping of breath. Work your way up. Let's take that other leg in front, crossing the legs the other way. Begin to walk the hands out in front of you. Find that gentle opening in that hip. You need to remove the block or blanket. You can. And then we'll walk our way back up and find yourself to all fours. You can just take those feet off to the side and roll onto the knees, hands spread wide. 
wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale, look up. But this time, really try not to grasp for breath here in this cat and cow. Oftentimes, we'll just inhale like we're trying to suck in the breath like a vacuum cleaner. But I just really want you to focus on just allowing the breath and receiving the breath rather than manipulating or dragging breath in. Inhale, lift and look up. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, opening space in the body for receiving the grace of our God. Inhale, lift and look up. Exhale, open the back of the heart. Stay here. This time we're going to receive breath in this cow, cat position. So inhale through the back of the heart and then exhale. Feel that breath sliding along the spine as you exhale, lift and look up. Inhale. Receive through the back of the heart and then exhale, let that breath lengthen along the spine. One more time, inhale, receive. Opening the, even the back of the heart and then exhale, feeling the breath along the spine, lift and look up. Let's tuck the toes under, take the hands, one hand print in front of you and lift up for down dog. Now, if you don't wanna come into down dog, you can leave the knees on the floor and just reach the hands forward for puppy dog pose. So your choice. Right here, let's receive what the body needs. Maybe it's lifting the heels way up off the ground and finding a good lengthening. Maybe it's drawing the heels towards the ground. Maybe it's pressing one heel and the other. Maybe it's taking the hips in circles. Just kind of listen in here and see if you can find a little bit of movement receiving this pose in the way that's just right for your body. Whatever that looks like to you. Good. Look between your hands. Drop to your knees if you need to. We're going to step that right foot right in between the hands. Grab blocks to bring the floor a little closer to you if you need that. Otherwise, you can just reach down for the floor. Let's drop the back knee down. Let's turn that front foot out and bring that right hand into the inside of the foot as you just kind of open into that hip. Turning the foot out just gives you a little bit more space sometimes to kind of push down and work through the hip. Receive the breath here. Moving in whatever way feels best for you. Let's bring that foot back into the center of our hands, tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee off the mat, and joyfully, steadily finding connection with the earth as we joyfully lift up into a high lunge. Now here we go. We want to maybe start grasping here. We maybe want to start, we feel the body start to work. Can we continue to receive grace, receive breath? One more breath in. And exhale, lower down, find the mat. Come back to plank, kneeling or toes, and then lower down to the mat, chaturanga. Inhale, lift, upward facing. Exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing. Coming back to receiving the breath, lift that tailbone high, reach the heels for the mat. Look between the hands, and we'll bring that left foot in between the hands. Drop to the knees if you need to, to step that foot through. Good. So from here, we're going to turn the left toes out to the, that long edge of the mat and just begin to really sink down into those hips, taking a few really deep breaths here, receiving this opening in the inner thighs. So oftentimes in yoga poses, we resist. We resist this opening of the body. Our bodies have come, become so used to being so tight and, and stagnant. And so <laughs> yoga is our opportunity to open it back up, become like we were when we were kids. <laughs> That's the goal anyways, right? <laughs> Good, so go ahead and bring that foot back to center. Turn those, that back toe under, lift the knee off the mat. Find your steady connection to the earth as you joyfully and gracefully lift to the heavens. Take a breath in, exhale, let it go. Find a nice steady connection to the earth and a receiving of the breath. 
soaking it in, not grasping, just receiving. On your exhale, let's go ahead and find the mat. Find your plank position, knees or toes, lower down to the mat, belly or chaturanga. Inhale, lift, upward facing or cobra. Exhale, turn the toes, downward facing. Drop to the knees, big toes together, knees apart. Sink those hips back towards the heels as you lengthen out the whole back of the body. Child's pose. Forehead meets the mat here. And just take a moment to inquire in, where am I resisting his grace? In what ways am I not receiving his atonement? In what ways am I self-criticizing and judging myself or others? Practice receiving the breath, feeling the belly rise into the legs. Rise off your mat, leaving those things on the mat that are no longer serving your ability to receive his grace. Go ahead and come onto a seat. We'll extend the legs out in front, sitting up into a nice tall stack pose. Press the hands down into the mat. Let's roll the shoulders up to the ears and back down. And with a nice tall lifted spine, work your way forward. Maybe those knees need to bend a little bit. That's just fine. Maybe you need to get a block and sit up on it. If you have very tight hamstrings or, or blankets, we'll just come forward gently, making sure that you don't feel anything into the low back and receive what is. Maybe you can't come down as far as me, but you're trying to get the belly on the thighs first rather than the chest to the knees, okay? Belly on thighs, let's inhale back up out of it. Find staff pose again, lightly pressing those hands into the floor as you sit up, finding strength in the, um, in the hip flexors. And then exhale, let's come forward again, maybe taking a deeper grip, maybe finding a strap. <laughs> I could reach for that. Or maybe finding your feet as you come forward, maybe a little deeper. Inhale your way back out. And this time we'll take the right knee, bring it into the thigh. And we'll just do one leg at a time. So turn your belly button towards that long leg and just begin to work your way down the leg using a strap if you need to, to keep that nice long back, striving to get the belly on the thighs. Beautiful job. Take a few breaths in here. Receive the back that sensation in the back of the leg. What happens when we receive um, and soften with grace to things that feel maybe a little sensational, a little uncomfortable emotionally, physically, um, mentally, this practice of receiving and knowing that all is well if we can just ease into it. Let's switch sides, bring that left knee in, right leg is straight, turn the belly button towards that leg and begin to strive to get the belly towards the leg, find a strap if you need it, or if you can reach for the foot, you can do that as well. Take a moment here to ease into no grasping the breath, the sensation in the back of the leg. Beautiful, go ahead and come on out of that. Let's place both feet together. Knees open wide, inhale, lift, and exhale, dive down in. This time you can let your back round and just get a nice stretch for the lumbar spine. Open the thighs, open those inner thighs as you can press the knees down with your elbows, if that feels good for you. Good 
Practice receiving that breath. One more breath. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and work your way down. First of all, though, we're going to just curl in. So curl everything in, um, kind of pulling in the knees to open up the back of the shoulders. Tuck the chin in and really curl that spine to stretch out the back of the neck and back of the shoulders. And from there, we're just going to work back. Keep that tuck with the chin and shoulders rolling down and in. As you roll back, feel that nice stretch as you roll back and straighten the arms, grabbing onto the knees. And then from there, we'll just roll down, keep that rolled spine, that curled spine as you roll down onto the mat and unfurl the body. There we go, roll down onto the mat. <laughs> and we'll settle in here for Shavasana. You can grab a blanket if you'd like. Um, or you can just, you can keep the knees bent, maybe taking the feet out to the edge of the mat, or you can extend the legs along the mat. Open the palms to the ceiling, turn the shoulder blades under. And Shavasana, this is the ultimate pose of receiving, of letting go of what we think perfection is. And of allowing the body to rest. And in this Shavasana, using the imagery of resting upon our perfect Father in Heaven. Of resting upon His grace and His understanding of how difficult it can be at times to be like Him. But He doesn't expect that from us. He doesn't. Continuing that practice of receiving the breath and letting it go. Let the body melt into the mat, heavy and sinking. Trusting, surrendering to that perfect Father. Begin to take in some deeper breaths. Receiving the grace of your practice, wiggle fingers and toes as you notice the relaxed physical body. And then when you're ready, you can just turn to a side, resting here as long as feels good. All the while practicing that receiving the breath without manipulation, without striving. When you're ready, you can come to a seat. I'll finish with quoting Elder Holland's testimony. I testify of that grand destiny made available to us by the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, who himself continued from grace to grace until 
In his immortality, he received a perfect fullness of celestial glory. I testify that in this and every hour, he is with nail-scarred hands, extending to us that same grace, holding on to us and encouraging us, refusing to let us go until we are safely home in the embrace of heavenly parents. For such a perfect moment, I continue to strive, however clumsily. For such a perfect gift, I continue to give things, however inadequately. I do so in the very name of perfection itself, of him who has never been clumsy or inadequate, but who loves all of us, who are, even in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May we all continue to clumsily struggle in perfection as we accept his grace. Let's end by taking Dove Mudra, placing the fingertips together, hovering over the heart area, like you're holding something precious inside, that precious gift of grace that Christ offers us. Hold it above the heart. As you breathe in, feeling that precious gift emanate and fill the heart area. As you breathe out, giving your very best. As you breathe in, receiving grace. As you breathe out. One more time, in. And out. Thank you for practicing with me today. The light in me recognizes the light and divinity and spirit in each of you. Namaste.